It's Crimizar here, outside of the sandbox today. What better way to spend my birthday than to release a new video for you guys? Honestly though, I love the overwhelmingly positive response I got from my first video. It really pushed me to get this video out ASAP for you guys. I scrapped the idea of making an egg video for every unit. Instead, I'll do them by tier, starting with tier 1 units. Before I get into all of the openers that I tested last weekend, I want to first discuss how to calculate the potential size of Ascend. This way, you will know what to build from this guide. Like last time, if you aren't interested, you can skip to any section using the timestamps below. This is gonna get a bit technical, but I want to still go over how you can figure out the size of the incoming send on wave 3. This becomes more important the higher rank you go, as people will be pushing workers more efficiently. You need to take into consideration what the opponent sent on wave 1 and 2, how long the waves 1 and 2 were, and what is the opener the person sending to you started with. So let's skim through each one really quickly before I give an example. Here I have built some units that are high worker openers. These units allow players to push aggressively for workers early enabling a potentially bigger send on wave 3. Here are some examples of units that cost too much gold to be able to gain a lot of mythium during waves 1 and 2, so you don't have to be too scared against them. The easiest way to remember this is looking at how much the opener costs. If it's 190 or more, egging is safer. If it's less than that, then egging is going to be riskier. So Bonecrusher has one of the slowest clear times while also being a high worker opener. This makes it especially threatening to your egg. By the end of this clip, I accumulate 80 Mythium, not including the 20 I used for King Up on Wave 1. I plan to make a video on how to play Egg in depth in the future, but the point is, use this knowledge to figure out what to build. Here is an example from a Master Elo game I played near the end of Season 8. Take note that he sent me a snail. Since he sent me a snail on 1, the most he can send me is a snail on 2, so I only build Egg here. You will notice that I take a look at the enemy opener and noticed he started with a low worker opener. Also, since nobody leaked, I conclude that the most he could send me is a dragon turtle. Now you will see me build accordingly using my infographic. Now we get rewarded with the healthy Hydra, and I go on to win this game because I am a god gamer, obviously. Alright, now let's get started. Here is the base case. It's pretty straightforward. Basically all you need to know is if you get sent on wave 1, build an egg and nothing else. Going in alphabetical order, Bone Warrior is first, and sadly he is the worst tier 1 for egg opener. It's possible to hold wave 2 against DT, but it requires each of your Bone Warriors to take exactly one whale while also hitting the DT. So it ended up being way too inconsistent. Also, a DT on wave 3 requires way too much gold to hold, and you cannot hold a brood at all. In short, just don't do it. Next up, Buzzes. They are pretty mediocre. They can hold DT on 2, and if you expect to brood on 3, you can opt to just let your egg die. One stack on egg is perfectly fine as long as you push workers and pressure your opponent instead of wasting gold trying to hold the send. Chained Fist uses the exact same logic as Buzzes but are slightly better because Oathbreaker is 10 gold cheaper. Looters use the exact same logic as Buzzes and Chained Fist. Out of the three, they are the best because you can defend the DT send with the least amount of gold and you can treasure hunt the pack rat after the egg hatches. In terms of gold efficiency, Masked Spirits are equal to Buzzes. Not much else to really say. Here is where we start getting into the good ones. Peewees are capable of holding a Brute on three unlike all the previous ones, but it comes with a major downside. You have to build nothing on 2 to prepare for a brute. A single veteran can hold a DT send too, so this opener is still better than all the other openers we covered so far. Polywogs are one of the best egg openers. You can prepare for a DT send on wave 2 and a brute send on 3, unlike Peewees. I just wanted to thank Reddit user shin 3rd for this wave 3 brute setup. Sorry if I butchered your name by the way. Another great thing about this build compared to the build from my first video is that you don't have to sell polywogs either. His build also made me realize that positioning eggs near the front is not very optimal for building past wave 3. My original logic is that it shortens the length of the wave and helps melee units defend the egg. 
the trade-off is generally not worth it. Last but not least, protons. They are marginally worse than polywogs, but better than any other tier 1 egg opener. They use the exact same logic as polywogs to fend off a brute send on 3. I have provided a link in the description below to an excel spreadsheet with all the egg openers I have covered so far. If you guys find any other builds that are better than the ones I have presented, please let me know. I won't be able to update the video, but I can keep the infographics up to date with the best builds. I also offer a coaching service, details of that are in the description. Comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, and or critiques. I read through all of them. If you like these types of guides, please like the video and subscribe. It encourages me to keep posting videos. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video.